Welcome. Hello. Happy President's Day. I bet I'm the first person to wish you a happy President's Day today. I might be the last, but you know what? That's what it is. It's a holiday. We'll celebrate. I'll allow you to celebrate in whatever means necessary. Guys, I am so happy to be back here on Popcorn Talk to be talking with our guest today. He is incredible. His show on Amazon is incredible. I'm so excited. First, I want to go over a couple of things. I thought about this the other day. You know, it's President's Day. You have more of an impact on the world around you every single day than the President of the United States. Think about it, the world around you in particular, the impact that you have in your community, the impact that you have on people around you, more so than the President because he's away in Washington, any politician is away in Washington, you and the world around you have more of an impact. And the other thing, you can do whatever you wanna do. An incredible story I read just before the show is of an Olympian named Elizabeth Sweeney. She found a way to compete in the Olympics. She admits she's an average skier, found a way by qualifying for certain world events the last two years, qualifying for the team in Hungary, which is where her grandparents are from, just competed at the Olympics, did marginal, did average, but for the rest of her life, she can say she is an Olympic athlete. Found a way. If you want to do something, find a way, make it happen. And that is what our guest has done in his entire life. He is living his dream as an actor on TV screens, on movie screens around the world. He currently stars on Amazon's new hit show, Absentia, which is incredible. I'm a viewer, I love it. You can find him there on Amazon. He has also been starring across from Tom Cruise in Jack Reacher's Never Go Back. He's also been a regular on Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce, 30 Rock, The Good Wife, Law & Order, several other shows. Please welcome Patrick Husinger. Hello. Are you watching the Olympics? Is that something that's it's on right now? You know, I, I set my DVR to watch all of it, um, and uh, and I, and I ended up not watching a lot of it this this time around. However, I did have a brief um, obsession with curling this year. Cur really? Yeah, it was like the first one that was on, and so I started watching it. You know, I was just I was really craving some Olympic love. And, <laughs> So I, I turned on the I turned on the TV and curling was on and one night I I think I stayed up till like three a.m. or something I was texting my buddy I was like I'm I'm still I'm watching curling right now and I'm <laughs> loving it I'm so into it Have you ever it, been curling? No, it was sort of secretly I mean like this this girl you were just talking about the skier I think secretly in my head it was that sport which I thought. Hey, maybe one day I'll go to the Olympics and mm -hmm. I'll get like and I'll medal for the Olympics. <laughs> and like, how can I? When could I do that at the age of fifty? What sport could I do? And I thought, you know, curling. I, so, <laughs> so a little piece of me was watching like maybe I'll study curling one day when I'm like sixty and I, you know, and I'm just, you know, not working as an actor or something. And uh, and I started watching. Of course, you like with anything, you quickly learn how. Yeah wonderfully complicated it is and yeah it, it's how never as easy like oh cur who does ever, curling ever. well you are, this you're like, guy does you're like curling. who does curling oh the american brother and sister <laughs> team who've like done it their entire lives and have like silent communication with each other and it's it's, it's so, so, so true i watched it. Yeah. i was watching it the other night too i'm not gonna lie yeah. i was watching it for like really three hours no really it was like, entertaining the heck is this but yeah. it's so talented yeah. that basically anyone who doesn't know curling you're sliding a big concrete slab on ice landing it on like a target and yeah. they get it close to the middle or wherever they want to yeah. get it every time. Yeah, it's the same kind of like shuffleboard or um, both the bar version and the one yeah. that, like at your uh, grandmother's apartment building. It's <laughs> like it's the same. It's the same thing, and you're just trying to get points and basically you know be the person who's closest to the center. Um, but it's they're really good. They are really yeah. good. I mean, there's a whole. And also, I didn't understand this year that the name curling is because there's a stone in the middle that's blocking it, and they actually have to curl around it. Like I'm, I, I'm an idiot. I, see, I, I didn't even that realize together. that. You yeah. are that's something that new that I'm learning right now. It was really cool, and I loved that. I loved that. I don't know. I I had, well, I had a little moment. I had a little well, moment. for anyone else who has now learning that as well, you're going to learn a lot yeah. more in this episode. We are live here every single Monday on Popcorn Talk for a new episode, talking with successful people in many industries who. We often put on pedestals, but the more the show goes on, we just realize that they're just like you and I, that they have struggles, that they go through things, that sometimes they hit their head against a wall, but they keep powering through, and that's exactly what we're going to encourage you to do as well. If you want to follow Patrick after the show, at Husinger on Instagram and Twitter, he'll tweet mm -hmm. out his curling thoughts. You can follow <laughs> me on Instagram, on Twitter, at the only MC. Obviously, a lot of people watching the Olympics, a lot mm. of the people watching Absentia on Amazon, I'm one of them. I started watching i'm hooked it is a mate like i feel like 
I'm on the edge of my seat because there's always something new every like five minutes, and I can't yeah, miss moves, anything. It moves very, very quickly. There's a yeah. lot of you know plot development happens in a very short period of time. Um, every episode has a great cliffhanger, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I definitely I, I I watch it and think this is a very bingeable show, and I imagine yeah. very fun to watch. Of course, you know I've I've only seen it once, but even while I was watching, of course, I know everything that's going to happen. So I was <laughs> there was no suspense for me because uh, I had all the answers. Um, but uh, I imagine it must be really fun for for the viewers. So I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. it yeah, makes, it was. It it's, again, it's, it's just the suspense. And even you know, I want to say, I seem like all, I seem like all of your characters or a lot of your characters mm-hmm. seem to have been the bad guy. You know, you you're obviously the bad guy in Jack Reacher, but even yeah. in like smaller episodes. I remember in Castle and Bones, you were a killer. Yeah, yeah. Like it is, and I feel like a lot of people watching this, I, I, including me, are like. Is he going to be bad? Is he? Come on, he's well, a, is he a good guy? Well, I mean, you know, the rule of thumb is that you, I mean, I'm playing a psychopath, and <laughs> Jack Reacher never go back, and like, you know, they're not going to hire a psychopath. They want to hire somebody <laughs> that's fun to go to work with every day. So, I, I don't know. I actually haven't. It, it was only you know the procedural stuff, you know, like Bones and Castle, mm-hmm. those kinds of TV shows. I think those are easy to come in and do one episode. Yeah. Law and Order SVU, I played a another psychopath there um those are i think easy to do these sort of uh or or cat find myself playing roles where i'm playing an insane person or or somebody who's a villainous or an antagonist of some sort um but then when you primarily though most of my career has not been doing that you know especially uh for sure on stage every you know i think honestly besides those things that you named that's (laughs) it so the rest of my resume is playing like you know really you know uh Nice guys, or the boyfriend of, yeah. or the girl, and a ton of pilots that you, that never made it to air that I shot on. Uh, uh, I did I did five <laughs> pilots before I got my first uh, uh, wow. regular on a TV show, which is this one, which is Absentia. This and is you, my first. Yeah, I know. Kind of full thing. So what is, is it like? I mean, time. having this finally come out. I know it's been you've been filming for several months, and it yeah. took a while for it to actually make it onto Amazon. What is what is it like now? I don't know. Out? I mean, of course, it's. I, I'm I'm very happy that it's out there. I'm very happy people get to see it. It's very strange because we finished shooting a year, you know, less than a year ago. It'll be mm-hmm. a year at the end of March, and so it's been so far away from me that I've, I mean, I almost felt terrible as the, the other day. I think I was a little anxious. Mm-hmm. You know, what are people? You know, are they going to enjoy watching? Or are they going to watch it? Because that's what we're making it for, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We're making it for to entertain people. Uh, so you, you hope that they tune in. But w- one of our producers called us on the uh, the night that it aired. I got on the phone with her, and I was she was like, how do you feel? And she's super excited. I was like, I'm good. You know, I'm <laughs> about to hit the rowing machine right now. And, like, I was so super. I don't know. It was one of those strange things. It happens every now and then where... You know, I get a I get a phone call, and uh, I get a I you know I, the same sort of thing happened to me. I got my first big studio feature. I got you know uh, Jack Reacher Never Go Back, and the phone call came in. You know, you got the job, and I I got the phone, and uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time. She was sitting next to me, and they we had it on speaker, and we listened to it, and I was just sort of uh, okay. Cool. I mean, <laughs> I was almost nonchalant, which is and she very was probably strange. really excited. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it sets in a little bit later. You know, maybe you deal with it. And I was really excited. And you know, we just went to dinner. And we had dinner mm-hmm. with her, with two other friend, two other couples that night, and we had a nice time. And like, I don't know. I, I sort of my highs and lows. Um, uh, the kind of further into life that I get seem to be, and maybe this is a bit of conditioning that mm-hmm. I've had to talk about it um, a little bit uh, in, in auditioning for this process because there's so much rejection. Right? Yeah. So much of this is the, is auditioning and hearing no. And some people get lucky, you know, like uh, some of, uh, you know, the people on my show, for instance, there's, you've got some journeyman actors mm-hmm. and then you've got some, some actors that I think uh, got very lucky right out of college and that's, and that is, that's just the career. That's just what happens yeah. and how it goes for you. And uh, but for someone like me who's who had a lot of no before I started hearing yes, I I don't know. I'm just sort of you know I see it, I I love it. It's my art, but it's also my trade. Yeah, and it's also my craft. So uh, y- you know you I guess I I put the work in and the passion and the excitement and all the kind of major ups and downs mm-hmm. for me are while I am in the creative process. However, I think the Critical process, I I can't really, uh, yeah. or, and even the kind of airing process, I, I can't invest a lot of or too much energy into. It's yeah, not, it's not healthy. No, no, no. It's yeah. true. And again, slow and steady wins the race. So yeah. looking at that yeah. and not getting like 
all the way high and be like, yeah, this is awesome yeah. because the, you'll always come down from a high and you have to be able to For do sure. that the right way. Well, and then your lows extensively too. I mean, yeah. it's a very kind of the, the traditional Zen attitude, right? That you're, if, if you get the, the more excited, you tend to get something mm -hmm. about something. The, also the more, you know, uh, afraid or upset you will get about something or, or angry or whatever goes into that kind of fear territory opposite of joy. Um, yeah, I think it, uh, it affects, uh, it affects people differently. So, but this one long answer to your question <laughs> is, uh, yeah, I was just like, cool. It's out. <laughs> um, I don't know why I just turned into like a the you, surfer dude there. Yeah. Like I've, you know, that, that's a part of my life. Uh, High, highs versus lows. You filmed yeah. in Bulgaria for four months. High yeah. or a low? What, what is a pro or con of Bulgaria? Well, for me, it was very cool because my awesome. sister's husband is Bulgarian. So I got to, uh, I you know, I met him and met his, his you know, um, uh, family, siblings, and his you know his children. And I never really uh, knew much about their culture besides you know, then I couldn't even have pointed it uh, on a map. I don't think you. a lot of people can. Yeah, I mean, I, I can now, obviously, but at the time, I just, I, you know, Bulgaria, okay, you're from Bulgaria, Eastern Europe, that's all I yeah. have. And, uh, and so it was really cool for me just on that front to kind of get to know him a little bit better that way. Uh, but then obviously, you know, like any country, once you invest yourself in it and you get in with these people, um, you get to know them and start to respect where they're from and how they got there and their food and their music and their traditions and you get to know their history and you know and uh, Bulgaria is sort of they've been through it they've basically mm -hmm. been a country that was um, when you landed there uh, or when they started a war basically whoever got there first and landed there first got it because they, they don't have an army they don't have military so they'll the kind of I mean the way the you know a lot of these US does or in World War II for instance Germany I mean basically like Germany showed up and they were like it's yours because we can't stop you <laughs> um, not necessarily because they agreed with anything yeah. but were sort of forced to you know adopt um, this th that whole thing and so it, it's in you know, and it was a communist country for yeah. uh, for a long time. So it's a they have. But a the lot culture of, was good. I mean, the filming oh there man, was. Oh uh, First of all, the food there was really great. It's one of the few things that's not imported in mm. Bulgaria. So their food is all like, everything that you eat is grown there or raised there, um, and so it's delicious. And you can eat. You know, you're eating a carrot that's just roasted, but it's a very delicious carrot because and it doesn't need to have salt on yeah. it or be cooked you know fried or anything it's just so delicious and they have a lot of seafood too really um yeah because they're 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 not too far from um uh, coastal areas and the seas mm. that are there so um it was uh it was, that part was really really delicious the crew there too and a lot of us have commented on this was you know you don't know what you're gonna get when you go to yeah, if you shoot in, say, Atlanta or Vancouver mm -hmm. or Austin, you know, you don't sometimes... L.A., the crews are always great there. New York, the crews are always great there. Atlanta now, the crews are always great there. When people first started shooting there, a lot of the great crew members... I mean, this is, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years ago or something, but they started to kind of move there. I mean, there's a lot of people who have moved to Atlanta or moved to Vancouver mm -hmm. to go where there's more work opportunity, as people often do. And uh, and those crews are amazing there now, and a lot of them, you know, uh, learned the trade here. But now they're been around for long enough that they're training people in those hubs. And same thing with Bulgaria; it's a place where people shoot there, but not a lot. Yeah. And so it's kind of that early days of. I mean, I would put them in sort of the early days of the hub that Atlanta has become for filming. And uh, but and so you kind of don't know what you're going to get. And they were so good. I mean, just really, really great at their jobs. Very. Very, very skilled um, craftspeople, and uh, and I and we we all have sang their praises for a very mm -hmm. long time because they've just been, they were so good to us th during that process, and it was very grueling. I mean, it was very. We were shooting six days a week. We were shooting complete. We shot all ten episodes out of order. Yeah. So it would be like season one of The Sopranos shooting in I'm not going to give any spoilers here in case you haven't seen it because <laughs> I haven't so I don't know how I give you spoilers but <laughs> um, but you're like uh, uh, if, if you, you we, we would shoot scenes on the first week I would shoot scenes from episode one and later on that day I would also be shooting scenes from episode 10 and then you know that evening I might shoot from episode six I mean so you're constantly trying to keep the map and the puzzle in your head hoping that it fits together but at the same time you know the director and producers have their eyes on it too and so that was that was a, a task and while the actors are trying to do that well so are the production yeah. designers and they're trying to make sure that the set 
matches from episode one the way that it needs to uh, for episode three, and then that 10 looks different because we had the shootout and blah, blah, blah. You know, it gets very complicated for um, all creative aspects. Do you think this was your most challenging role? I mean, for people who don't know the show, yeah. you play Special Agent Nick Durand, mm-hmm. who is married to Stana Caddick, who mm-hmm. plays FBI agent Emily Byrne, mm-hmm. and she gets kind of abducted for six years, and everyone thinks she's dead. Yeah. Eventually, you get a call. You go find her. She, her memory is kind of erased, uh-huh. and kind of fitting together this puzzle. You are then remarried with the same child with Emily, uh-huh. and it's just again, it's such a thriller and drama and so many things. But to hear that you shot it out of order, I mean, what kind of is yeah. this a more challenging role? Do you think to date? Um, I mean, definitely. I, I almost have to call this challenging because it's the most people will have been able to see me on screen. Yeah. I mean, uh, I definitely think I've had stage roles that mm-hmm. asked me to do more. Uh, you know, television evolves very slowly character-wise, or should, in my opinion. Um, and so you're going to get to know people. Uh, in a play, you have two hours to get to know somebody. Mm-hmm. So if you're the lead of that play, you're going to get to know everything about them in a very short period of time. I mean, that's the art of, of theater. Um, and a TV show, you have 10 hours in mm-hmm. season one. Yeah. But then you're going to get 10 hours for season two, 10 hours season three. And so, you know, I don't want, I didn't want to, uh, I, there were, you know, there's places that that I knew in episode, while I'm shooting episode one, that I know I need, I have to like not get too far into. You know, it was very hard for me because a guy progressively gets more and more traumatized as the show goes on. So, uh, you know, he's traumatized when you meet him because he lost his wife. Then yeah. she returns, and that's a different kind of trauma. And then there's the uh, trauma of some later plot points that happen later on that involve his family. And it's and it's all and throughout it's, the course of a day that you're having to go on. Right, for these. the first part. And then, I mean, later on it goes, you know, we do it over the course. I mean, I think it the, probably is about a month and a half yeah. the show takes place. Um, and uh, and it, it, it's very... It's very... Uh, complicated to kind of uh, calibrate exactly like to remind yourself okay now I'm traumatized now because of A, B, C and D not traumatized because of E, F and G which are coming and do relate and maybe are similar to that kind of particular trauma I mean it's it was a I had to be very detailed I had to know exactly uh, how subtle I wanted to be Mm -hmm. and that was something I was also trying to stay in the land of too and on top of it I was playing someone who's introverted so it made it even more because i you know and 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 i deduced that because a lot of times my character wasn't speaking a lot i mean Mm -hmm. doesn't say how he feels so often through to anybody and oftentimes non-verbals yeah and there's a lot of non-verbal non-verbal and 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 non-verbal expression that doesn't give too much away to the people that he's spending his time with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, his wife is left to sort of guess. I mean, basically what happens is, is I, she comes back and he just sort of, I, I think he was opening up and coming yeah, out of his show. Starting and, to get there. And yeah, and he was building this very fragile house. And then she came out and she just grabbed one card from the bottom of the pile and the whole thing dumped. Or, or like a, it's like touching a, a snail or or, you know. Uh, an anemone, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, you hit them and then they, they, they uh, curl back inside because yeah. um, they're too sensitive. Um, and so, and, and then they effectively then put up walls. Yeah, to exactly. So that's where I spend a lot of this season in. And I think season two, I'm going to uh, very much work hard to kind of see how he begins to kind of, because now everything. Sorry, I shouldn't be talking about anything <laughs> I'm saying right now. Um, oh, we uh, like to hear. We like to hear the spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There isn't a spoiler. I okay. don't know if there's going to be a season two. Truly, um, like, you know, I mean, the way that TV works is uh, we don't have like, you know, you know, you never know. You never so have I need to, to say that. And I don't really, yeah. Um, and so, uh, but what can we expect if there would be a season? No, I really two? don't. No, no. The truth is, and I'm being very honest with you, is uh, I will tell you all. God's truth is, that, yeah. Of course, we have like, if we're gonna have a season two, and here's mm-hmm. when you're gonna be shooting it. Mm-hmm. But we don't know if we're gonna have a season two kind of thing. Has we, it been plotted you know, out? Like, what what a plot line would maybe be? They in are doing two? that right now. I mean, I think they know the grander scheme of things. Okay. Um, I think they walk in because the show is forced to with a Bible when they yeah, sell the yep. show. They call it a show Bible. Yep. So they they know. 
either generally or they have an idea how things are going to go. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they change it, right? You know, famous case, Breaking Bad. You've got Aaron Paul yep. who comes in, is supposed to do four or six episodes. His chemistry with Brian Cranston is so good that they decide to keep him and he becomes a major part of the show. And that sort of thing may happen too. You know, actors are may or may not choose to come back. You know, there's some people who are recurring on our show who may not be able to come back because they're going to get other gigs. Mm -hmm. and, and then you've got to kind of move around and just adjust uh, to that. And so, is there a character um, plot line in the second one, or is it more of a uh, of a of a that stuff? I don't know. Okay. That's the stuff that I don't know. I mean, I I, I mean, naturally, I think that it, it, as actors, we always want would love to be digging more into the psychologies of human beings. Mm -hmm. While if we can, you know, the way that Breaking Bad did so successfully, and Mad Men did so successfully, where you know, and and uh, Handmaid's Tale is doing mm -hmm. right now so brilliantly, yeah. or Marvelous M Mrs. Maisel is on. Um, a sister show on Amazon, uh, Amazon is doing so well um, uh, that they are developing wonderful characters while continuing the plot. And I, you know, I think we always hope we get to lean into that, and we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, it may continue to be a little bit more plot based, and may like move further in the character direction. Mm -hmm. Shows tend to in their second season, yeah. so I would say I'd imagine that's where we're gonna head. Uh, but I don't know, and uh, and uh, do you I, have any I, input on that? Do you? I mean, as um, one of the I I don't I don't. I mean, I certainly think you know the door is open for me to go have a conversation, mm -hmm. but I think that I've opted to uh, uh, not open that door. I was actually more interested in in um, in, in in making sure that we. Are gonna have. I'm very interested in. You know, I'm trying to push for make sure we have a female director, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we, uh, I think we're gonna have three or four directors this year, and make sure that we have one because we we had the one person do all the episodes last year, okay. and it'll be different for season two. Um, I'm very much making sure. You know, can we make sure? I would love an all female writers room for this show. Mm -hmm. I think that it was created by a woman. It's about a woman. Why not? This is what a great opportunity for a studio to yeah, for, move further in that direction. Um, and uh, and I also think that we need uh, our show is is uh, you know I think it it needs to be more diversified yeah. and and it will um, in you know and uh, uh, that's 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 part of I mean not making adjustments our show was cast the way it was cast um, because we had a very talented director and we had you know, mm -hmm. very passionate producers and they had a vision and they didn't know who was going to come in people just came in and, and got the jobs and uh and then i think you look and you watch the season and you say hey you know we, we can improve but, upon we this can we can improve it was upon good, this but we that's can right improve upon and that's the way you want your shows to be i think the shows that i'm watching i love when a show takes a good look at itself and says yeah what are we what, what can we do better um and I think our show is very um, um, dedicated to that. Yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of conversations, uh, too, with our show to to make sure that we, um, I, I, I mean, I know, that to make sure that everybody's very, very uh, passionate about making sure that we're being as conscious as we can and also yeah. uh, making the best, highest quality TV show that we can for viewers. No, and absolutely. that's somewhere where uh, I know or I understand that, you know, Stana has uh, stepped in very beautifully is because she, she is in a position for, I have, from what I understand from watching her interviews, I know as much as you guys do, <laughs> uh, but 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 uh, from what I understand, she is in a position where in the first time in her life, really, she's able to kind of offer uh, more uh, creative input yeah. and has had these kinds of conversations, and uh, and has and is definitely I know very eager to to look, how can we make it better? How can we step it up? And and, and apparently, you know, from, from what I've heard, has been very very uh, good in that mm -hmm. environment. And um, you know, the kind of notes she was giving in post and edits and that kind of thing have been very uh, have been the kind of thing that you want from an actor who's in a producing position. Yeah, because it's a I think it's a tricky. I think it's a very tricky territory for yeah. actors to be producers, and we've seen it throughout history. Um, uh, but I've also, you know, on my end, always heard that, you know, when you've got your, uh, you know, those directors that, you know, when you've got your Orson Welleses, that eventually there's a control thing that starts to happen, and you have to be very, you have to be very careful about, I think, as an actor, about how involved you want to be creatively, mm -hmm. because there's a certain point. You know, if you're 
I'm trying to pick like a, an, an actor that would be if you're Meryl Streep, you know, because I'm picking, you know, somebody I think is the greatest yeah. that's out there. So if you're Meryl Streep and people love and adore you artistically as much as they do, are they not going to want to take your, you know, your your advice to yeah. heart? I your mean, experience I'm that you're drawing to, on. I'm going to if I'm sitting in a room and I'm across street and she says she suggests I do anything. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, but sometimes it's not a suggestion. It's a this is this is what I need to do. Sure, right. I, but no, no, I don't think that she would be you know passive aggressive like no, that either. No, no. I think that she would, but like I would just be a fly on the wall, and she would say something like you know you know acting is better when it's done like this, and I'd be like okay, and then I'm gonna try to do that because she's a genius, and I'm gonna you know I emulate geniuses. Why not? That's what we all we all uh, want to find our genius, and sometimes that path is through other human beings, but. As actors, we have to be careful because maybe sometimes creatively, especially because we're we're not only involved from that side, we're involved in other creative mm -hmm. aspects of a show. And when you start to be, to involve yourself in other creative, it's a constant battle uh, when you're to to make sure that you're benefiting the uh, the group uh, mm -hmm. and not the individual. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that, and I think that's where. It gets really tricky, and I do not, I do not envy her. Um, but again, once again, I've, I've heard uh, through the grapevine that she's just been yeah. really, really uh, solid at kind of uh, awesome. keeping keeping the individual away, yeah, from uh, the individual's needs away from the group's needs. Yeah, yeah. you know, you we, we talked a lot about you know you, you, life before Ascension. You're talking about other projects and getting mm -hmm. way back. I think you, you credit your teachers kind of to getting you yeah. into acting. How yeah. so, or was this something that you wanted to do and they fueled that passion? No, I so I was, I was basically uh, where where it really started, where I kind of formally started doing theater. I was graduating. Graduating, mm -hmm. I was leaving eighth grade and going into <laughs> ninth grade, and uh, I was a little kid, hadn't gone through my growth spurt. I was 13 years old, and still hadn't done a play. I didn't do my first play for a few years, but um, they were doing at the School of the Arts, and I was going to a middle school that uh, specialized in academics, and was graduating to a high school that specialized in academics, and it was a public school magnet uh, school program, and they had a magnet school program that was for the arts. And um, so they were doing a summer musical that they do every single year. And everybody who auditions basically gets in. And I, uh, some teachers said, you know, we really think you'll be comfortable. Uh, we think you're comfortable with public speaking. We think that this would really be a good place to explore your kind of creativity. And so I gave it a shot and I, I fell in love with it. And I, after the opening night of that show, I mean, coincidentally, actually, the guy who directed that show, his name is Michael J. Higgins, and he was my, he ended up, I ended up leaving the academic high school to go to the arts high school in 10th grade. Um, and I mean, I'll tell you a funny little story. So I found out that I wanted to fall, that, that I wanted to do acting after that very first show. This guy directs this show, um, mm -hmm. had nothing to do with it. He was just sort of this sort of uh, intimidating person who was wrangling 100 and you know 75 kids to do a musical on stage that was many people that were on stage then the kids were also doing the crew and making the costumes and building the sets so there's another guy named terry monday you know bless his soul who had to organize like 100 people <laughs> with like power saws and like yeah kids, you know, yeah, kids. With power saws yeah and just and that's a whole other thing um <laughs> And then there's the costume department, you know, and the, it was it was it was it was cool. It was the school of the arts. It was very fame esque, and um, I mean, you know, including with people singing in the summer, you know, and dancing in the hallways and that kind of stuff. You know, we didn't all do it at the same time. That it was, was the Glee. Your Glee was based off your. Yeah, you know. I mean, it was that kind of. You know, I mean, I, I haven't seen Glee, but uh, <laughs> but that kind of energy though of that everybody. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't an actual live musical, sadly. Um, but no, I was I was doing that show, and I I was walking to the parking lot with my mom, and I said, uh, I love this. I think I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life, and then she laughed, and <laughs> um, and it wasn't like to be mean. It was just like I'm a 13 year old kid. I mean, I imagine yeah. if, if I walked around with like my my nephew right now, you know, who who will be 13, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the next couple of years. If I walked around with him, and he looked at me and he was like, Here's what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. At 13, I'd be like. Yeah. Hey, come on, bud. Come Great on. Like, plan. There's other things to explore. Like, get out there. But I knew. I knew. I knew I wanted to do this. And so, I, um, so I, I, I continued to do it at that new high school. 
my my mother was intent on me staying at the academic high school because she wanted me to go to like mm -hmm. Harvard or Yale or do those kinds of things. Um, you went to an okay uh, after I, I program. Yeah, yeah. And then just Juilliard. Yeah, but I mean, it, it worked. It worked out nice. But like, I didn't have the grades to get into those schools. I mean, I may have if I applied myself, but I really wasn't. I wasn't in love with it. I didn't. I had no interest in learning how to write an essay. Mm -hmm. I loved reading. I wanted to read all the books, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to write. I wanted to. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed acting. I enjoyed storytelling, and it wasn't for the ways even at. 14 or 13 that some people do like it. I, you know, I was listening to the, that Mark Marin podcast I was talking to you about before the show, uh, WTF, and I was, he was, I'm listening to the very beginning of it, and he was talking to somebody about uh, Patton Oswalt today about why people do comedy. And I found myself responding the same way that I, I didn't do it, I've never have done it for the claps. I don't enjoy it. I'm closer to Mark Marin, which is, I am sort of, finding myself slowly through this process. Mm. I don't consider it therapy, but that there is sort of a revealing process that I think should and, 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 and in its best versions does happen with actors. If you see actors and you don't feel like they're giving you something about themselves, ultimately you can always identify a selfish actor when they're doing that because yeah. they're it's about them. It's not about... Mm -hmm. uh, about like sharing, it's about like taking. Um, and then there's another kind of actor that I think does it for like just the claps, you know, mm -hmm. just wants to go out and know they, they're gonna land their punchlines. And there's a, you know, transitive version of that. That's, and then there's another kind of actor I think that uh, likes to create, I mean, truly just likes to create and really that wants to dig further, further into that land. And it's about exploring things and it never gets old for them because they're, they're attacked with that energy. And I'm, I'm, I'm I'm much more in that creative land, but I certainly love the sharing land too, and the revealing land. Um, yeah. I, and uh, go ahead. But I know, well, I know a lot of actors too. They yeah. they they do it because it allows them to be a character, maybe escape a little bit. Yeah. And you know, yeah. whether you're growing up and, and you're not the most popular kid, or you yeah. don't have money, or there's some reason to be able to escape almost. And it's fun. There is there is an escapism. Was that, um, there is an escapism quality to it. I and I definitely. Did I think early in my acting life? I mean, early in my acting life, it was all these things. Honestly, I was like, I knew I was definitely never did it for the claps. I was never even at thirteen. I just didn't care what yeah. you know if if people enjoyed it or not. Uh, you know, and I've I've failed a lot. I mean, I've had so many roles where I thought in my head, oh, I'm doing something wonderful here, and then <laughs> you know, and then they you know you start to realize it's not affecting the audience, which is your first and foremost goal, um, you know, whether you're making them laugh or yeah. making them understand or learn something or cry or whatever. Um, and, and, I've, it, it, and you just, I don't know, you have to, let me go back though too, cause I've kind of got away from the point that I was getting to, which is I, uh, I did it even at an early age. I knew the reasons why I was doing it. And then I had to sort of fight to get into this other school cause my mom didn't want me to go there. The teachers got behind. Uh, me, I went to a guidance counselor, and they kind of, we kind of sat my parents down and <laughs> lied to them, more or less. I mean, that's basically what we did, and we said, he can't stay here, his grades aren't good enough, grades were definitely fine. Um, uh, he has to leave, and then I transferred to the School of the Arts. In that School of the Arts process, uh, I, I did not get into the school. The acting teacher at the, at the academic school uh, wrote a letter begging them to let me in. They eventually did as a technician, so as a technical theater major for a while. And then, uh, and then I eventually, because they have the same classes as the first year actors, yeah. and I took it and I did well enough and they let me do it and they let me transfer over. And, uh, and that ended up changing my life because suddenly that same guy who was the intimidating figure, um, uh, he actually ended up becoming effectively my uh, my theater mentor, and at that time, wow. I was also sort of an, in, I was very, you know, uh, energetic, shall we say, child, <laughs> and, um, great word choice, yeah, and he was, he was helpful to, to kind of me honing a lot of my emotional intelligence that I was able to develop at that time, um, took many, many years to understand myself on that level, <laughs> uh, more, but, uh, but at that time, I was, I was, I was, 
I was just a little nutball, and uh, and he was able to help me kind of hone those skills and turn them into something. And eventually, I did the very first play uh, with him, he, him directing it, and that was the thing that kind of made me realize of oh, I can really change audiences. Do you do you think back and say what if that hadn't have worked out? Have you haven't had the people pushing you? Hadn't had all these other things? Huh. Like what would have? Happened? I don't know. I mean, I assume because I was in a military town and, you know, my, my grandfathers were both Navy that that was, you know, down the line for mm -hmm. me. I mean, I knew I was, you know, I was gifted and doing that kind of those, mm -hmm. you know, we took those IQ tests and they're yeah. like, you have an above average IQ. And so you'll go spend, you know, your days, you know, playing chess and looking at fine art and listening to classical music and, you know, learning kids, the learning stuff other kids weren't doing. Um, and I, so I assume I would have maybe have tried to go do that. And I was very athletic, and so I, I think I, I would have found my way there. But I also think that I'm foolish enough that I would have probably uh, put myself in harm's way. I don't think I, I, don't think wow. I would have been a, I'm not sure, I think I could, like potentially could have been a great leader in that I would have, um, I, I would have been able to deal with the kind of, I, I, at least I hope I would have been able to deal with the kind of terror of being yeah. in those situations because I am even killed that way. But sometimes when I, you know, when you really have conversations with um, with vets or, or active duty soldiers, you you realize just how it's terrible, so different than anything you could terrible imagine. I would have yeah. been at it, and I would have been a failure uh, at at that. And so I don't I don't know. I mean, this was this was the thing. I mean, yeah. this was sort of my only option now if it goes away i think i have a lot of options you yeah. know now if it disappears i think that i could find myself i don't know i would i would think i'd love to pick up music again which mm -hmm. was something that i flirted with when i graduated college for a while and um i mean i love i love food so i don't know maybe <laughs> i'd like I, I would i mean seriously i think i would probably start a <laughs> blog on sweets First, um, which is the last thing in this world that I need. I'm favorite type to of candy? Eat. Oof, favorite type of candy? I mean, I, let me just say sweets generally, because okay. candy I tend to kind of stay away from now, because um, like I can stare down a candy bar for whatever reason. But I used to love a Three Musketeers or mm. Snicker, like chocolatey. But then I would also hit those paydays sometimes. <laughs> I was the worst, uh, and the Reese's anything. Can't um, say no. Yeah, but I do I do love the classic Oreo. Mm -hmm. Dipped in milk, which I also it's the OG. Oh man, oh, it's so good! It's so good. I used to put them in and wait till I felt the crispy go away between my fingers <laughs> and then eat them. There's a, for those like, who don't think there's a yeah. science, there yeah. is. Oh man, you know you know people do the uh, <laughs> they put them back and they do that whole thing. It's it's a whole thing. Um, well, but, but, yeah, obviously you, you graduated high school, you went to Juilliard, which yeah. is you know the number one performing arts school in the world by a lot of people's standards. Yeah, sure. But even after that, you get, it's amazing because a lot of people think, oh, you went to Juilliard, anyone to Juilliard, mm -hmm. you're automatically success. And so mm -hmm. that's why they started the show when you're like, oh, I had this that didn't work out and this that didn't work yeah. out. I mean, how do you deal with that or what was that period of your life like? I mean, it's very, I mean, uh, those periods of my life yeah, when I've those, had it not work out, period life, generally, yeah. let me see if I'm trying to identify one in my head in particular, because it's e it'll be easier to obviously mm -hmm. speak from that place uh, than it will be to be generally like, you know, I just pulled up my bootstraps <laughs> and I did it and everything's going to be fine, everyone. <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? That kind of talk never did it for me. It was yeah. very much the effective talk. You know I mean? I think, I, I mean, I, I, I work very hard when I feel... I, down. We were talking before the, before the show about how people, um, you know, inevitably have a point where they feel like they're going to quit in this business. Mm -hmm. I never got to that place where I really thought I was going to quit. Um, I spent more energy trying to make sure I was inspired because I knew that when I'm inspired by something, that I do my most effective work. So if I, you know, when I see actors, I, I tend to be, I'll watch act, I'll watch everything, and I. I have a hard time looking at somebody being like they're terrible uh, because I'm I'm a firm believer in development. Like how many actors have I watched in movies where I see them earlier in their career and and and, and objectively, I mean even though it is it's art so it's always subjective, but objectively I feel like I'm looking at them going, oh, "Okay, they didn't, you know, they missed these kinds of major story marks yeah. that I feel like you needed to nail in order to tell that story well." Um, and then you see them later in their career in those same places where they had really weak toolboxes, they're so talented now. I mean, this happens mm. 
all the time and I get to watch it and I love that's one of my favorite things actually is saying you know I don't enjoy watching that actor very much and I'm not sure this actress doesn't like you know never really hit me and then you watch them in a movie and they blow you away and that that excites me that's super fun and I can you know I can watch I love I mean, one of my favorite things is watching somebody like the great Meryl Streep and seeing where she started in her career and Connecting watching the dots along the yeah, way. You can watch her movie, her entire filmography, and you can watch her develop into the extra. And, and you know, she's a little harder because she's a little bit of a cheater in that <laughs> she was always a genius. I mean, you'll watch the first <laughs> thing she's ever in. And you're like, geez, she's <laughs> so I mean, like so good, so young. Um, and some actors have that. Some actors mm -hmm. have that great, have that great ability. I mean, we were talking about in college. Um, you know, I have those actors that I graduated with who, who are doing very, very well. And then there's a lot of actors who just aren't doing it anymore. And some of it doesn't have to do with. Some of it has to do with talent. You know, this person's you know just had that thing that was enjoyable for people to watch or something. But some of it was just. You know, it was too hard. I mean, like, there's some attitude of it, wise, or how too hard? I'm too hard. Like, didn't have the money. You know, some mm. people come from families whose parents are, you know, very famous Oscar-winning actors, mm -hmm. and some people come from families who were could financially support them through the mm -hmm. rough times, and some people came from families where they just had emotional support. You know, and some people come from families where they didn't have a family. Yeah. You know, they were missing a parent throughout their entire childhood, or both. Or maybe during the process of schooling, something horrible happened, or right after. Well, you know, there's all these life things that happen to you, and you know, I was, I was very, you know, didn't have like, I was such a difficult child that I didn't have like the happiest of upbringings, and no fault of my parents, they were children raising children, um, but they always loved me, and that was, I was very fortunate in that department, and, and they were always very, very good to me and wanted to wanted to find out how to uh, make me a more pleasant child <laughs> to make me to make me happier figure out what was going on you know what I mean but like they were very they were very interested in that and so were my siblings and 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 uh, and I I had that love and support but a lot of people that I graduated with didn't mm -hmm. but what I didn't have that some other people had was financial support I mean, we just didn't have a lot of money mm -hmm. and we didn't grow up with that and so it was up to me basically the moment I graduated to figure out how to do it. You know, the moment that I lost that last stipend from Juilliard, it was sort of like, all right, you gotta go figure it out. And how long can I make the number one Chinese honey chicken order that's, <laughs> you know, was two ninety nine? How many meals can I break that into during the day? And how did you, know? you do it? I mean, I did that. I, I cut it into three meals and I stared it down and every now and then, you know, I'd eat all of them. No, but you yeah, to, yeah, I know the question you really want me to answer, which is I, I, I found myself inspired. I would watch movies that made me excited. I would watch books. I would go what we see live theater that made me inspired. And, you know, as I get older, it gets to branch out more. I mean, I find mm -hmm. these podcasts that excite me so much. Like, I love Radio Lab because I love hearing these fascinating stories about, you know, this the family realizing they could connect or, and communicate with their autistic child through through Disney, you know, movie musicals for the first time. And I love watching that excites me. And I love, you know, hearing this insane story of a woman who lived in an apartment with a dolphin <laughs> for a long time, you know, and I, like it's 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 that kind of stuff. That was that's Radio Lab. But then because you think if, if they can do it, then you can do it. No, I think I I think I artistically if my brain is full of creativity because I was saying that's the direction mm -hmm, I lean mm -hmm. more into then I'll get I get ideas from watching these things I see that and I think ooh, wouldn't that be a fun story or maybe maybe that's a fun psychology to explore like what is it like for a human being that has to live with an animal for four or three years of their lives or whatever it was what is it like to have a child you know who because the the root in for acting I think for all great actors is empathy and the more understanding of all human beings and that that takes you know it's a challenge because because mm -hmm. it's very easy to say i don't like this group of people and i do like this group of people um you know especially you know with the political landscape that we have now but it's very important that uh, as an actor anyway that i spend all of my time making sure that i really understand whomever i'm playing without judgment, so that even if their belief systems are opposite or opposed to mine, that those people, when they're watching me on screen, who are like that character, can really 
connect and can really identify with that person. Um, I now let me see if I can just answer more generally, because I'm I'm not getting to the question <laughs> that you're asking me. No, you do. I mean, I, that's I mean, it's yeah. so true. Because like, yeah. I think that in my own life, you know, you anytime you get down, I feel like I'm maybe surrounded by too much negativity. And yeah. if I can surround yeah. myself with yeah. positive thoughts, with positive stories and inspiration, then you're like, yeah, that, that's why I ask. Like, do I mean, you think? Do you think if other people can have done it, then you can do it too? Because that's what I think in my own life. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I read this. Sorry. I'm like, oh yeah, this got done. Why? Why can't I also be like this? Mm -hmm. I see that. I see, the, I see a little bit more. I think of the question that you're asking, which is, do I actually? So one of the things, for instance, there were people that I came up with in college that I, you know, know personally, and I'm not going to name drop any of them right now. But mm -hmm. it's sort of what I, I really love watching them do their work because it, that is inspiring to me. Because for some people, if you had your parent in the business. In the whole world, that's the world you grew yeah. up in, you know. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't dislike you for it. it. It's a bummer that I didn't get to skip all the steps you got <laughs> to skip, and I have to, you know, do go through a different alley to, to get a, a, a specific job sometimes. But it's a, uh, it's for for my side. What I do have, my version of my parents that were in the business, is the people that I got to go to school with and watch do it. These mm -hmm. wonderfully, I mean, extraordinarily talented actors, some of whom I kind of always knew were gonna, you know, we'd be watching on screen yeah. and, and or on stage, and some of whom I was surprised to see turn into, uh, you know, the wonderful extraordinary talents that they have. And who is, I mean, if you don't mind, who is one of the ones that you always knew and who is one, maybe one example of someone who you didn't know and kind of has turned it? Do you mind? Oh, I mean, man, that's a not fun game for me to play <laughs> <laughs> for the second one, no. uh, for, especially for the second one. Okay, I what think, is the first one? Um, someone who you always knew, you're like, I knew this was going to uh, uh, I think I think for sure Jessica Chastain. I mean, we hmm. like she, Jessica was like came into school running because she had already I think been to college a little bit first and she really hit the, the runway knowing exactly what she wanted to do and what she wanted mm -hmm. to be and why she was going to school there and that was I mean that's the great that's why a lot of you know countries do this you know they do a year off right they do yeah. their what do they call it? They call it not a sabbatical, but it's, it, like, it's a, like a it's like a travel year, yeah, like yes. a like a yeah. it's like a hang out and party and kick out the jams <laughs> year, basically. Like that's kind of like I didn't do do that. I went straight from I was 18 years old. I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. I had a kind of a summer off, but not really because I did a, mm -hmm. a job in the summer, yep. and then I went straight to college in New York City from Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I went to one of the most uh, population. They may have just gotten. You may have just gotten my. My, my belch that I tried to hide. <laughs> um, but you go from the most population uh, spread out city in the country, we're the largest city land area wise, to the most population dense. And that was, that was a lot. That was a lot for an 18 year old to soak in. Yeah. And But other things like Jessica not only had that, she was also just, um, Jessica knew who she was from a very, very early age in, in like a very impressive way in a way that took me true truthfully I mean years and years and that maybe I'm still on the hunt for her. and I think what she also knew though she also very much embraced that developing human thing too mm -hmm. which I think took after I was like I know who I am it took me more years to also go oh but it's always changing and I need to go with the flow and I need to you know, learn more, and that's part of what's going to keep me mm -hmm. a fully realized human. And um, and she did things like, you know, Juilliard, Juilliard, which is you're saying, you know, you're touting as this big, amazing yeah. school, and it and and it is, and has done a lot of amazing things for people, but. As it is that amazing, shouldn't it be doing the thing that all the other schools are doing, for instance, that are conservatories, like having a Los Angeles audition showcase at the end yeah. of their four years of training? And at the time, when Jessica was graduating, because uh, I ended up in two different classes, mm -hmm. I, I ended up taking a year off because I did feel like I was too young <laughs> to be there, and I took a year off to do self-exploration and came back, graduated with the second class. Um, but uh, so she ended up graduating the year before I did, but she was like, why don't we have a showcase? And she sat down the uh, faculty, you know, and got the support of her class and said, let's do this. But she spearheaded it. I mean, she was she was doing that kind of stuff, which at that age, it's, even yeah. when I was special. You know, yeah, it was it's just kind of uh, forethought and 
uh, bigger picture thinking that I was not capable of at that time. But and uh, and that, that was always impressive. And so she always had that. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, no, no. I think that, again, that's everyone kind of goes at different paces, and that's mm -hmm. totally fine. Uh, as we wrap up, I, one of the things I, I want to know, because I always, I always think this, because, again, a lot of people see the TV screen and they think mm -hmm. everything is great. No matter who you are, you have bad days. But for actors, you have to play someone who sometimes can be in a great mood or a bad mood that's mm -hmm. different than your current mood outside of acting. Yeah. So how do you balance those two or sometimes go to work and be like, I have to put everything that's going on in my personal life, whether it's good or bad or whatever, on hold to mm. play this role? How do you balance that? So, it's, hmm. I, I mean, I have a couple. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always changing my strategies because mm -hmm. I'm always trying to learn what works better, and so I don't. I try not to get too settled, mm -hmm. and I also don't want to become that stiff old actor that everybody works with who's stuck in his ways. And I feel like that's what happens with every grandpa, basically, right? <laughs> Is they and not just acting; it's with anything in life that they get to a point where they're just immobile. You know, they've, yeah. they've, um, you know. Uh, 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 they found a way to sort of pacify the world or to get mm -hmm. things under control. They get in a rut, which is, is... is Right, is to live in habit or, you know, to become petrified. And I'm not really interested in that game. So right now, the most recent way that I've done it with, with Absentia um, is I, I tried sort of putting myself in a cave of sorts. I didn't go mm. out. I didn't um, party. I didn't go out and have big nights of drinking. I, I you know, we drank... I think I drank on my birthday, you know, and like <laughs> we went to a hilarious, awesome, like '90s rock club uh, while we were there for my birthday. But uh, but that that was about it, you know. And I mm. wasn't really uh, going out, and I wasn't socializing as much as maybe to a fault, honestly. Then that's one of the things I want to try to mm -hmm. change next year. I wanted to like I didn't really get to know anybody yeah. because I was so secluded, and I kind of was so. Dedicated to wanting the audience to receive a great story that I was, I, I, I focused, worked, showed up to set, did the work, you know, turned around, went home and worked more. And it was constantly, because I didn't have much time. I mean, I had to be like, I needed to stay in good shape. I needed to have the scenes prepared. I needed to, you know, make sure that I was feeding myself properly. Mm -hmm. I needed to make sure I was taking care of, you know, the other actors. And you know, there's a lot to sort of balls to sort of uh, juggle in the air. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't leaving anyone hanging or dropping any of them. But that's the dues that you have to pay. Yeah. And I mean, sure. the dedication, like yeah. you're saying, but that is what leads to what people really enjoy on yeah. the screen. And they don't, they, again, hearing that, they're like, oh, yeah, he probably did the set. And then, yeah, went and partied in Bulgaria or wherever and did mm -hmm. this. But. They don't realize that the work it's, doesn't it's end work. when you leave I mean, set. it's work. It's hard work. And the more you have to do on a show, the harder work it is yeah. because there's just less time. I mean, there's just mm – -hmm. you don't have the, 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 the you know, uh, the, the fourth dimension uh, real estate to, <laughs> to, to, to take advantage of. I mean, there's just so little time. And so you have to do with what you can. And, I, yeah, I mean, the way that I sort of – handled that was to kind of insulate myself in a way that mm -hmm. I was only surrounded by the work and constantly feeding my brain with ideas and thoughts and I would watch things and read things to try to stay inspired, mm -hmm. to keep that going, which was difficult over the course of a few months yeah. on a roll like that. Yeah. Finally, I want to know, because I, I... We're was, already at the end? We're already at the end. Oh, I know. Man. It's flown I'm so by, sorry. hasn't it? I feel it? like you asked me like five questions, and the, I people don't, sort of answered some People of don't want to hear from me in this show. They want to <laughs> hear from you, and you did such a great job. And again, I, again I'm again i sitting back, and I'm learning of how and you, as an accomplished and successful actor, has done these things, and how you prepare for roles, and... I well, I mean, like, honestly, I mean, the way that I am in my head, because the way that I live, I think, is like, like, you even say that phrase, accomplished and successful actor, which is uh, I, I, very flattering, uh, you know, but I, I also at the same time, I hear it and I'm like, hey, I'm not an accomplished and successful, and, I, uh, and I, I don't know if I, I really don't know, because I'm this kind of person, too, if I will ever feel that, you know what I mean? Because mm. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, now I'm starting to get in, to dig further into a world yeah. of, the semantics of what those words mean, yep. maybe, of what it means to be accomplished and successful. So I don't see that in terms of acting because I don't, I don't, you know, again, I don't think it dies. It's a living mm -hmm. organism. But I do like, uh, uh, 
I don't know. There is a there is sort of a Zen state to get to that. No matter mm-hmm. what you're doing, you're like, no, yeah. I'm a success in this world. I'm very yeah. happy. And it's okay. With my life. It's okay to feel that yeah. too. It's okay to yeah. look back and be like, I have achieved yeah. a certain level of success, and that's okay because yeah. when you're working and you're dedicated, like you have, when you're literally going from work, getting off, and you keep working, it's okay to be able yeah. to have that. It's okay to be able to hear. What yeah, you're fi- about to ask me something. Sorry. Final question. What advice do you have for other people to be able to get to where you are, to be able to hmm. kind of achieve the success of being on TV, mm-hmm. of fighting through the times when they might want to quit, when they might have gotten the series regular thing and they get the pilot and then they don't get it? Yeah. What advice um, do you have for people to keep going or to achieve the success as an actor? I mean, the first thing, the first and foremost thing is you have to believe inside of your own brain that you are passionate, creative, and talented at the thing that you love, Hmm. whatever that thing is. So this is just an art question, I think, in general. Um, And you have to be satisfied. You have to be very satisfied that it's just not going to happen. I mean, there's a Hmm. weird thing there. There's Hmm. in 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 what I mean by it is going to happen. You have to be satisfied that whatever lofty dreams and strange goals that you're giving yourself. aren't what it's about because what, what what I feel like it does if I'm like I am passionate I am good at this and I and I am lighting that fire from within myself it's going to burn very very loudly uh, no matter what I'm doing and no matter where I'm doing it and and if I and if you if you keep that fire if you keep stoking that fire the work is going to be great and the byproduct of the work being great is that people are going to want to see it and people are going to want to buy it and people are going to want to go visit it or show up um and when the work is that high quality and people start showing up then people are going to want to pay you more money for it (laughs) and people you know what i mean it's sort of like the byproduct it's kind of like i mean do you know? I, I don't want to. I, I I do not want. And some actors differ this. I I have no interest in being famous. I really just don't care. Um, uh, maybe maybe to my own detriment. Mm-hmm. Like if I wanted to be a little more famous, like I, I I could be right now, I suppose. But like I don't I don't want it. I don't want it. But I'm very aware that it's a byproduct of the art form that I chose in the medium that I'm choosing to mm-hmm. explore it. And so for me to be upset, if I were ever to get, for me to be upset if somebody ever, you know, decides they're going to take paparazzi pictures of me one day, it's sort of like, no, oh, come on, dude, that's the, that's the, that's the world you yeah. chose to go into. Mm-hmm. And so th- similarly, that those are byproducts of, of being good at your job. It's sort of like, just be great at your job. Let all those other things come. Um, the more and more passionate that you can be about the thing that you love and the more that you can invest into that world and the things that, w- whether tangentially or directly, are going to assist in your education of that art form, whether it's medical and you're a doctor or you're a lawyer or you're an actor, uh, the, 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 the rewards that you're hoping in the wrong way to reap you know, are, will be present yeah. and they're going to show up. Um, no. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. And again, you're, you're the perfect example of you're doing things for the right reason, and then the other things will come. You're not an actor, again, to be able to get the claps or to be able to get the success of the money. You want to put out a that's good weird. product, and no matter what area you're in, whether yeah. that's an athlete, an actor, a musician, whatever, you do it for the right reasons, yeah. the other things will come. But I also want to I want to note on that idea that you just said, mm-hmm. too, maybe to put an you know, to open up the world a little bit more, too, is that, hey, man, we're all going to battle it. I'm not going to say I never oh. was an actor that maybe wants some claps sometimes and that I haven't been in that position and I haven't done it before. And maybe I'm not going to say that, like, oh, I enjoyed this thing once. Like, I never did that. I have done it, and I will probably do it again. Mm-hmm. And it'll be a constant challenge for myself to ask myself, where do I stand in the integrity of, as an artist? You know, mm-hmm. wh- which thing am I going to invest in more? And which direction do I want to lean into further? And uh, that kind of check on yourself will keep your, you know, hopefully the art, uh, the art pure. Yeah. I don't, no, I don't know. no, absolutely. Thank you hey, so man. much. No, this for is for coming so fun. on. I'm mean, again. This was just a great conversation. Okay, uh, you good, know, good, good. To be able to just pick your brain as an actor, to be able to learn what kind of motivates and drives you, uh, and also to get to hear secrets and stuff about Absentia, which again, if you haven't seen I'm, it, I'm go worried. to Amazon. I mean, I mean, yeah. I don't think I've given away too many secrets. No, 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 no. Just enough that it piques trouble. our interest. Guys, thank you so much yeah. for joining us for another episode of I Could Never Be. Again, every single Monday, we are here on Popcorn Talk, sharing some inspiration, some motivation from the people that you look up to, the people that you see on your TV screens, your movie screens, everywhere else. 
Guys, again, if you want to be able to follow Patrick off the show at Hugh Singer on Instagram, mm-hmm. on Twitter. I know mm-hmm. the people from the show have been great on social media. Oh, they're media. great. They're great. I found yeah. out Bob Really, really good show. good uh, PR team over there. They're very, very nice people, absolutely, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you guys want to follow me, at the only MC mm-hmm. on Instagram, on Twitter, thank you again for joining us. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on iTunes. Give a comment on YouTube. Tell a friend. Remember, you have more of an impact every single day than the President of the United States. Let that stay with you. We'll see you next time. That's a good thought. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.